All right, so next on the speaker list is Ian Power, who is Chief Investment Officer at Truffle Asset Management. Ian manages the Ned Group Balanced and Ned Group Managed Fund, which is one of the funds that we hold within one of our multi-manager ranges. And Ian is really going to give us a short presentation specifically on the South African environment with a focus really on the retail sector. So Ian, I hand over to you. Morning everyone and thanks uh, Trevor and coming to you from a cold uh, Johannesburg and a little bit wet as well. Um, I think you know the 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 backdrop that we've all heard this morning and I think nicely sketched from Trevor's opening and, and, and specifically Nikki mentioning you know what are some of the key deliverables that uh, government needs to I guess really show us to change this environment is is illustrated well in looking at the retail market and the retail sector which has really been at the epicenter of the crisis uh, but I guess more importantly what I'm going to show you is when we take a step back is a lot of these problems have been entrenched for quite some time and um, you know without seeing evidence of this change uh, I guess one needs to be circumspect in terms of uh, you know how we look at some of these assets. But if we get into the um, the presentation, um, just going on to the first slide, the first slide just really demonstrating that the the dislocation of the South African economy to the rest of the world, and we're showing here a slide of the median country uh, GDP per capita growth. Uh, versus South Africa and what you can see is there was a very nice tight fit uh, going back to the early 90s um, in terms of the South African economic output per capita versus the rest of the world. Yes, we had a little bit more volatility and that's because we are an emerging market, but you can see by and large we would come back to the trend um, and, and deliver per capita growth in line with the median country. And you can see with the inception of the Zuma era, there was this dislocation and this ever widening gap to the extent that if you look at the the lighter green line, you can see that on a per capita basis, South Africa or South Africans have been getting poorer for the last couple of years. And I think that talks really to uh, the crux of what Nikki was saying uh, in terms of some of these structural changes and reforms, together with the fact that under the, the Zuma era, um, you know, we have almost or more than doubled our, our debt to GDP over 10 years and yet we, we have nothing to show for it. We have power stations that don't work and trains that don't fit the tracks. So, you know, I think this is an important slide, first of all, to, to really sum up um, the economic backdrop from a South African perspective and it's important because the retailers and SA focused businesses need to earn their earnings in this underlying environment. So Nikki also mentioned the, the extraordinary rents that South African corporates and consumers are having to pay because of moribund and effectively non-going concern SOEs. Um, you've heard about ESCOM and I think here just take a look at the graph going back to 1987 and showing you our ESCOM tariff increases versus CPI and you can see the extent to, to which the South African price increases for electricity were actually below CPI and we had a very stable and powerful network in that period which delivered uh, reliable uh, service and reliable electricity at a very competitive price and this would have uh, encouraged businesses which uh, electricity forms a big portion of their cost base to invest in South Africa and that's exactly what we saw with the likes of BHP Billiton um, and, and many businesses investing in electricity intensive businesses but you can see the change from, from 2007, 2008 to the extent of the underinvestment and the lack of maintenance on these um, on these facilities. And you can see the extent to which now we've had almost 450% uh, tariff increases over that period where inflation is only up about 100%. And we know that each of us listening today, um, you know, we all have to pay our electricity bills and we certainly don't recoup that in terms of wage increases 
to uh, to to the similar extent. So I mean, I don't get a, a more than a four percent salary increase yet. You know, when I'm faced with rates, water, electricity continually going up more than inflation, that takes a bite out of our disposable income, and it's exactly the same for SA corporates. So if you can imagine. SA corporates have become less competitive over the last 10 years as a consequence of not SA not investing in our productive assets or or capital, uh, which ultimately, if we were a company, uh, South Africa is becoming less competitive versus other global countries. So what about valuations? And I think Sunay touched on some good points uh, in, in her presentation. And I think she said a few things which I think are important to keep in the back of our minds, is that often the best value will come at the darkest time. And I think if we take a look at this slide, which is really showing you the apparel retail sector uh, valuations versus their long-term median, and I've used a two-year forward PE because earnings have collapsed currently in the retail market and there is a recovery um, in terms of the two-year forward consensus that is built in. And I think if you look at this slide, what you can see is that optically, relative to the history, um, current multiples are looking cheap uh, versus the long-term median. So on a superficial basis, I think you know what this graph means is that you're paying a discount for um, a, a, a unit of apparel retail industry um, to the extent that, you know, if one looks back at the history, you know, you were perhaps paying a 13 times multiple, whereas you can buy into that today at around about a 10 times on a two year forward. So that, you know, looks interesting and certainly you would be perking up your your ears and thinking, you know, are there are there bargains to be had in this environment? Now, what is also interesting is over that same 10 year period, if you look at the returns on invested capital of the industry, they have in fact halved over that same period. Now, these, these returns have declined for, for various reasons, but the reasons would include uh, the lower growth backdrop, which I think you've, you've seen as evidenced by our dislocation from the rest of the world. And then the fact of the matter is that SA businesses like consumers have been facing um, big increases in the administrative prices uh, in terms of their underlying businesses, which they haven't been able to recoup. So their, their margins have come under pressure, their asset turns have come under pressure, and many of these businesses in an attempt to escape um, a declining and low growth SA environment then turn to offshore markets and uh, promptly got some bloody noses to the extent that they bought assets overseas, which have been disastrous for, for shareholders. So whether it be Trueworths buying office um, and effectively writing off 30% of their market cap or Woolies buying um, a dinosaur in the, in, the, in the likes of David Jones, uh, it has not turned out well uh, for SA reta uh, retailers who have typically gone offshore in search of better markets. So from a, a sales point of view, I thought this slide is quite a nice one because it shows you how over a long period of time, even though the series is volatile, uh, RSI, uh, South African clothing retail sales, what you can see is there's a very distinct trend that typically in the you know, 2010, 2011, those uh, uh, first three years, you can see that the average retailer was was generating sales growth of almost double digits and sometimes double digits. But as the handcuffs that have been imposed on our economy, because of the lack of structural reform, uh, the extraordinary rents that taxpayers have had to pay to fund uh, bankrupt or non-going concern uh, um, state-owned enterprises, you've slowly seen investor confidence consumer confidence sap away and a low growth environment results in lower amount of money being circulated in the economy, which ultimately uh, manifests in lower sales. So you can see how this series effectively is now amortized all the way down pretty close to zero. And I think the, the problem with this is that when you are a company and you are facing electricity price increases this year, 
uh, through your landlords of 15 to 17 percent if you're a mine, if you're a manufacturer um, and your and your labor increase costs are going up at four to six percent, uh, yet there's no growth in the economy, it means your margins are coming under increasing pressure. And ultimately then you have to start looking at your at your cost base. And I think if we look at the cost bases, one of the uh, the series that for us was very, very interesting to observe is if you look at the the um, OPEX to sales ratio. So this is the operational expenditure in businesses as a percentage of sales. And what you can see is how those ratios have risen uh, over the last 10 years. So the underlying costs in the business have been rising at a faster rate than what sales have, which puts pressure on margins and ultimately results in less profits for shareholders. So it's no surprise to us at Truffle that we've seen a lot of the price destruction uh, even prior to COVID um, in many of the retail sector because of what you've been seeing in the SA economy. Now, that's all history and it's uh, looking in the rear view mirror. And as Sunay said, you know, often you can get the best bargains at the darkest hour. And I think there's no doubt that superficially the valuations today of many of these businesses are, are much cheaper than they were. But the question is, is there really a mean reversion opportunity to the extent that um, you know, profits can then mean revert, margins can rise and you get a, a commensurate rise in PEs. And I think for that to happen, you need certain things to change in the economy, which I think Nikki has already alluded to. If one looks at the food retail sector, it's been a lot more defensive, but is still under a lot of pressure. And I think what is interesting here is if you just look at the three year estimated uh, earnings growth uh, numbers that we've got for the next three years, you can see these are um, you know, at best slightly higher than inflation on, on average. And very importantly, you can see how those three year forward looking ROEs have also come down. So, you know, effectively, when you're looking for bargains, you would be wanting to buy into these businesses at attractive prices. And when we look at their forward multiples, the current forward multiples versus the five year averages certainly don't look compelling with the exception of Woolies, uh, which does look interesting. And generally, we would say that food retail does not look cheap optically. Um, compared to the apparel retailers, which do, but we think that you're going to need uh, economic certainty. We think you're going to need policy reform before you get investor consumer sentiment returning to the extent that you can then see this value opp opportunity being unlocked. So whilst optically, you know, the apparel retailers and, you know, Woolies might look cheap, uh, it's going to be difficult to unlock that value when you are not seeing a normal cyclical recovery in the SA economy like we would have seen in previous cycles. What is interesting when you look at the SA investable universe, if we just look at the um, the um, all share and look at the, the makeup of the all share and what we've done is we've taken the SA focused uh, businesses which are highlighted in red and you can see almost 20 years ago they were almost 70 percent of the market and today they sit at just under 40 percent so many of the bigger businesses which have continued to grow and which either just happen to be listed in South Africa or generate their earnings by exporting are enjoying the benefits of that better more robust global growth environment whereas South Africa has been shackled by all the factors that we have spoken about. So so in in essence, yes, there there certainly might be some opportunities in that red space, but we're going to need um, the economic conditions to improve and we need the state to take the lead in terms of reform to take that backdrop. So I think on this slide in terms of decisive action, I think Nikki covered it quite nicely and really highlighting the fact that we need decisive intervention. And with that intervention will come the uh, keys to unlock the handcuffs on what optically does look like some interesting valuations in some of the SA shares. But if that doesn't happen, they may well just turn out to be the value traps that they've been for the last couple of years. So to summarize, I think it's fair to say that the economic backdrop is going to remain tough. 
At Truffle, we are data dependent. We continue to observe the data and look for changes, uh, which might give us a lead in terms of uh, whether the backdrop is going to get better. I think I've given you an illustration of in the apparel sector and banks would be another sector where we can say optically valuations look cheap, but it is in inverted commas. And it's an inverted commas because the mean reversion opportunity is going to be a function of the earnings recovery potential. And I think that's where all the question marks are, as you've heard echoed by Nikki's uh, introduction in so far as that backdrop. And I think ultimately the, the earnings recovery that we see from SA corporates is going to be a function of the structural reform and the extent to which there is political appetite and capital to do that. And if that happens, there could be a fantastic opportunity in some of these SA focused assets. But until we see that, the mere fact that PEs are lower, we don't think is enough for, for us to get really excited about allocating significantly or significant uh, um, uh, higher proportions of capital to those shares because they may just end up being uh, value traps like they have been for the last couple of years. So, you know, in a in a much lower growth environment with lower returns, PEs need to be lower. Um, if banks can't cover their cost of equity and their WAC, they will trade at discounts to their uh, to their book value. So, unless you can see ROEs getting above cost of equity, some of the banks will not trade at premiums to their to their NAVs again. And I think that's really the crux of the matter. Now, having said that, there are absolutely opportunities across all the sectors. So it is a very much a stock pickers market. And, you know, at Truffle, we feel that we think uh, volatility is going to remain high because of the uncertainty. But what is good is that volatility creates opportunities for managers which are nimble and able to allocate capital quickly um, to shares which gets sold down below the intrinsic value. So hopefully that gives you some sort of sense in so far as how we are seeing uh, the, I guess, the SA focused businesses and some of the challenges that they're facing and some of the factors that we're looking for, which would give us more confidence to be able to allocate more capital to some of these businesses. Thanks. Ian, thank Ian, you so thank much, you so for, much that. for that. Uh, very uh, interesting. Certainly, I, I guess um, from my personal side, I've been trying my hardest to keep Woolworths and spa food sales up during the crisis. Can I just ask you, you're not going to get totally off it. A very short um, reply, though, because we're just trying to keep on track. And you did touch on it on the banking financial mm. stocks. But can you just give like a, in, in a minute um, what you see, what, what your gut, Truffles position is in terms of, of banking stocks, financial services stocks, um, and I'm guessing the catalyst for those to also reprice is very much the same catalysts that you'll need for the retail sector. But can you just give a very quick answer yeah. just on how you guys see so, the banking stocks? No, that's right, Trevor. And I think I think banks like the apparel retailers certainly don't look expensively priced. So whether we look at banks on a price to book basis, on a PE basis, they look very cheap relative to the assets um, and the loans that they have on their books. But the uncertainty is that if we are in an economy which is going to remain shackled and does not or is unable to grow, it is going to be hard for SA businesses to generate enough revenue growth to offset those cost pressures which are coming through the system. So I think that in essence um, really is um, what we're talking about. So, so we do hold some of the financials where we think, you know, some of the bigger franchises, they are bigger businesses, they're going to be with able to or able to withstand these, these difficult times and they are going to be able to cut costs. And I think that's a point that you touched on and uh, Nikki touched on is we're going to see corporates aggressively target their cost basis to protect their margins, but ultimately that doesn't help the economy because it just creates higher unemployment. So it gets back to what Nikki was saying is we need to see some decisive structural reform uh, which will really create a backdrop to unlock some of the value that uh, optically is apparent in some of these assets. Great, Ian. Thank you. That's uh, 
I think, yeah, sets the scene well. Thanks, Ian, very much for your time and comments and insights. And also, yeah, for the great job that Truffle are doing in terms of managing the, the managed and balanced fund. So keep up the good work. And yeah, you're welcome to obviously listen in to the rest of the, the webinar.